water, basic necessity of life. So when you're in the backcountry, uh, you definitely need to have access to clean water. Uh, there's a lot of people that have misconceptions over what these different water treatment systems can do. Well, they simply just don't know what they need for what they're going to be <clears throat> in the application that they're going to be using. So today I'm going to talk to you about water filtration. We're going to cover uh, four different areas within the water filtration uh, and two different subcategories. Uh, the four different areas are going to be boiling, chemicals, uh, microfiber filters, <clears throat> and UV. And uh, real quickly, just to touch on the subcategory, it's going to be water filtration versus water purification. Um, and there's a big difference between those two. So water filtration um, talks about, usually it's your mechanical devices, your, your, your microfiber filters, um, that's going to filter out bacteria and protozoa. Uh, whereas water purification will cover bacteria, protozoa, and viruses. For the most, uh, for the most part, these microfiber filaments cannot, can usually only go down to 0.1 microns. Uh, and so viruses are smaller than that and so they can get through. Uh, so uh, starting out, we're gonna start with the basic uh, way to purify water that's been done for thousands of years and that is simply boiling water. Now I say basic, I have this BioLite system here that's kind of high speed, it's got a battery on it and it's like a wood gasification stove, but it's just to represent that you can boil water. Um, and boiling water, you wanna boil for at least five minutes. You know, depending on your elevation, you wanna take that in consideration, but minimum five minutes. Uh, 10 minutes are golden. Um, technically, some people say, well, once the, the water starts to boil, you're good, but just for a good rule of thumb, five minutes. Uh, if you're at higher elevations, you might want to go to seven to 10 minutes. Uh, moving on to chemicals, uh, we're going to talk about iodine and chlorine dioxide. Um, uh, iodine, uh, this right here was issued almost 20 years ago, and it, I wouldn't use this because it's old, but um, it come in just little bottles like this. Um, the chlorine dioxide, uh, most people are familiar with Akamura. And um, basically the way they work is your chemicals will kill all three. It will purify the water and not just filter the water. Uh, and it does that by basically the iodine and the chlorine dioxide uh, attack the nucleic acid um, of the microorganisms and uh, keep them from, uh, it basically messes up their DNA uh, and keeps them from replicating and so once they mess up the DNA uh, enough that the organism, the cell, tells itself to, to kill itself. Um, the drawback to iodine, for one, is that uh, in, can be, it's bad for you if you don't watch your concentrations. Um, if you're using, if you need to filter, filter water or purify water, correction, over a long period of time, I wouldn't say iodine is the best way to go. Um, iodine is also a thyroid inhibitor. Uh, so your endocrine system, I, like for myself, I'm hypothyroid, so I have to take a thyroid supplement, um, a T4 sup, but uh, this can cause your thyroid to not work uh, and not produce uh, as much as, it, uh, as it's supposed to. And so um, just keep those things in mind. I'm not a huge fan of iodine, it does work. Um, another thing with uh, both chlorine dioxide and the iodine is that um, you have to wait a certain amount of time. And for example, um, the, uh, the cryptosporidium cysts, uh, they are, you have to wait about four hours for them to be affected. And so everything else it can kill within 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, but you're um, really to be completely safe using uh, any of these chemicals, you have to wait four hours just to make sure that those cryptosporidium cysts, that specific microorganism, is killed. Um, uh, moving on to our microfiber filtering systems. And so again, the difference was um, between uh, filtering and purifying. And so the iodine, the boiling, the iodine, um, and the chlorine dioxide will uh, purify, and uh, as well as the UV, but we're, not, we're gonna talk about water filtration, and that's where we're gonna talk about our Sawyers. Um, some of our inline filters, this is an MSR, uh, the catadin systems, the pump, the mechanical pump systems. Uh, so starting with the Sawyer, um, this is the original Sawyer, the Sawyer Squeeze. Uh, it weighs about 3.5 ounces and uh, it's 0.1 micron. So <clears throat> the government states, uh, the, in regulation, the standardization is 0.2 microns is what's acceptable from the, uh, from the U.S. government in terms of the size of the, um, the the tubes in here and so what it is is basically just a whole bunch of little tubes and they're very 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 small tubes and um, 
when your bacteria and your protozoa come to the tube, they're, they're bigger than the tube and they can't pass through. However, uh, water can pass through. Um, so that's how these work. And the big thing with these is you have to back flush them quite often because the, there's you know, thousands of those little tubes in there and so sediment and other things can clog them up. And so after uh, every two or three uses, um, and these come with a syringe, you'll take the syringe, uh, you'll put clean fresh water in here and put it in the, uh, the outlet and then you'll flush it and then you'll back flush it and get all that sediment and debris out. <clears throat> Now the squeeze, the original does come with, uh, it's sold in two variations. Um, <clears throat> it's sold with the uh, filter itself. It comes with a little cap that's on it right here that you can take off and you can just drink shit out of it. And uh, you can take this off and you can also use this um, to, back, to when you back flush, you'll take this off. You'll just put the syringe straight in there and you'll back flush it. Um, it comes with either a 32 ounce bag um, and this is a Mylar foil bag. The uh, original bags they made were kind of were uh, known or prone to fail, um, but their newer Mylar foil bags um, are pretty durable. Uh, the uh, the whole system is BPA free on the Sawyer system. Um, uh, you can get it with that configuration, or you can get it with a 64, 32, and a 16. So one of the attachments you can get for the uh, Sawyer squeeze is going to be a uh, bladder connection system, and basically you get these two pieces here. And uh, this is marked for dirty water, it's gray, and this is for your clean water. And uh, it shows here your flow, so this would be your clean coming out here. You screw this on here, and you screw this back here. And then what you can do is you can either cut your line and then place this in line. You'll just take and slide up in the, into the tubing, or you can take off uh, the head of your line here, and then you can just put it straight in here. And then instead of having this portion here, you can just have the standard drinking system here. And so if you're on the go um, and you want to just take your bladder, fill it up real quick, uh, if you have a quick disconnect on your bladder and uh, you want to leave your line in place and just have this kind of strapped to your pack, strap right here, um, you can just throw your bladder in there. It's just your bladder will always be dirty water uh, if you use it that way. And so uh, that can cause problems if that's your only water container because uh, if you do, if this were to fail on you and you did have to boil water, you have to boil water, put the boiling water in your bladder, um, and that can possibly compromise your bladder uh, to clean your bladder out and then re-boil the water and then put the clean water in your bladder. Um, so it's best to really not put dirty water into your, if you only have one uh, container. Uh, the mini, uh, so they used to, real quick on this, they used to say that this was good for a million gallons, but now on the Sawyer's website, they no longer claim a million gallons. They don't claim any amount of gallons. Whereas on the Mini, they claim 100,000 gallons, and I thought that was interesting that they've taken that claim away. Uh, this is gonna have the better flow rate than the Mini. Um, the Mini is rated at 100,000 gallons. It's got the same stats as this one. Uh, they're both 0.1 microns. Um, they will filter out 99.99999, and that's five nines after the decimal of bacteria, and 99.99994 nines for the protozoa, but they will not filter out viruses. Um, the Mini does come with uh, the same thing, comes with a syringe, it comes with a straw, so you can just put the straw on the base here and then put it into your container or drink straight from water source, kind of like a life straw. Um, and these are really good systems, they're very effective, um, and but you just have to know where you're going to be and what your uh, exposure is in terms of uh, bacteria, protozoa, and viruses. Uh, to be able to determine whether you can use these systems here. Uh, another system that you can get, now this was um, a military application, but they sell a civilian version of this as well. It's the same thing, just different color. And it's uh, made by MSR for, uh, for Camelback. And it's the same thing. It, it, this has a charcoal element in it, and it also has a 0.2 um, micron uh, filter in here. And so what this was designed for, if you have a Camelback, so this is your, your standard camel, Camelback bladder, um, there's quick disconnects on these camelbacks and you just take it and just connect it here and then take your drinking in and connect it in here and so that's something these are only good for about 2,000 gallon or I'm sorry 2,000 liters uh, and you can't replace the cartridges um, you just have to throw them away uh, so it's not the most sustainable uh, use when in in terms of you know for example this does hundred thousand gallons whereas this does 2,000 liters which is uh, roughly five six hundred gallons I believe and so you know, these aren't bad systems, but 
Um, if you're in a hurry, you want something cheap, um, but yet still effective, again, not for viruses, but for bacteria and protozoa, then this is a decent route to go. And you can find these on uh, Amazon and other places. Uh, the next system I want to talk about uh, is the, the Catadin system, and uh, Catadin makes several different versions, and this is the Hiker version. They now have a Hiker Pro. And basically what this one is, it's a glass fiber filter uh, with activated charcoal. Um, it weighs 11 ounces. Uh, it's got a 0.2 micron uh, filter in there. Uh, it does one quart a minute of output, and it has an anti-clogging technology. And so basically what you do is it comes with uh, uh, an inline and an outline, and it has a float on it. This right here will float. You want to set this to, to be... And when you collect your water, you don't want to collect from the surface or from the bottom. Uh, and you want to make sure that you know it's not a lot of sediment, um, it's not real turbid water. And then you'll put this to where, here's the top of the water, here's the bottom. This will be kind of the center. This has a pre-filter in it. It then comes up into here, you pump it. And as you pump it, it pushes the clean water, um, the filtered water, not the purified water, uh, out the end. <clears throat> it does come with some attachments. It comes with this attachment here that you can basically, you stick it in here like this. And after you stick it in there like that, you take, say if you, say if you have a standard Nalgene bottle, it'll fit on there. It has two different sizes that it'll fit. Um, if you can see right there, it's stepped down. It also comes with another attachment to where you put this end in. And then what this does is if you have a bladder system, like for example, this camel back here that has a quick disconnect, quick disconnect it and then you just put this in and then you're pumping straight into your bladder. So you don't have to take your bladder out of your pack. You don't even have to take your pack off if you have this, you know, in a side pouch or on an outside pouch. You just grab it, plug this in, pump it, fill your bladder up, and then you're good to go. Um, and so all these systems here, these uh, microfiber, the water filtration systems, um, they're all going to be good in the United States and Canada for the most part. Um, really, you kind of have to look at uh, population. Um, if you're in an area that's heavily populated, um, you, you probably don't want to use these systems. You want to use a purifying system um, versus uh, if you're out in the outdoors and uh, there's not a whole lot of livestock or people around, then you can probably use the filtration system and be all right. There have been some instances in uh, some lakes that um, are kind of out in the wilderness, but they have road access to them and there'll be thousands of people using that lake. And so the more people, animals, um, feces that you have, um, it's going to introduce viruses. And so you have to be careful where you use these. And um, just because you had this and, and everyone says, oh, it's great in the United States, um, it's not always the case because if you're in an area that has, excuse me, um, a lot of human waste or animal waste, um, that's going to carry viruses and that can get through these filter systems. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about ultraviolet, and uh, the biggest proponent of ultraviolet is going to be uh, SteriPen. Uh, SteriPen is a good, bad product. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's a really good product um, when it works, but and they have a very low failure rate. Uh, they have a 1.3% failure rate based on um, SteriPen's website. They said that 1.3% of all the SteriPens they've sold that, um, have failed which is a very low margin of failure, but um, I recently went out and used this on a uh, overnight backpacking trip, one of my, my turkey pen gap backpacking trip. It's one of my videos I posted um, a couple months ago. And um, I took this out and it failed. And basically what happens is, um, so this has an ultraviolet light and what's happening is the UV light is going in and it's messing with the DNA again, so of the microorganism. Um, it's tearing, it's shredding the DNA and so um, the nucleic acid, which then, um, you have RNA, which then converts to, to DNA and tells, writes a code that says, hey, build these proteins um, and make certain structures, and that's what creates life. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's messing up the nucleic acid, messing up the DNA structure code, messing up the protein synthase, and uh, causing the organism to die uh, because once it realizes, that once the cell realizes that it can no longer do what its function is to do, um, it will terminate itself. And so, <clears throat> what you do on these is, um, there's two prongs right here. These are water sensors that just that know it's in the water and, and it'll start working. And then this is uh, emits the ultraviolet light. Now on this one here, so you, you for this one here you click it and um, you click it twice and it'll go to a half a liter. And then you're supposed to put it in your water source. Now this one has uh, a little rubber. Well, they all have a little rubber seal. This one is the ultra and it's rechargeable. Uh, it's got a little rubber seal right here. So what you can do is you put it. 
you know, the top and it's going to seal right there so you can turn this upside down and you can do this. Now what you uh, can't see is the light and what you're seeing right here, it's giving you the little frowny face saying that there's something wrong. And so this is brand new. I just purchased it um, not too long ago. I tested it before I went out. It worked. I, went out, I got out on the trail and, and it failed on me. And so when it comes to water filtration, um, you always want to have the rule of two is one and one is none. Uh, and basically what that means is you want to have a secondary means of, of uh, filtering and or purifying your water. Uh, so most people will have the ability to boil water, especially if you're on the trail um, or overlanding or car camping. Um, if, you're in a, if you're traveling, it's maybe a little different story, um, but you always want to have a secondary means of purifying your water or filtering your water, depending on your needs, um, whether viruses are a concern or not. Um, the Seripin also makes, uh, so this is the rechargeable system. Um, you just basically, it has a USB right there. You put the USB in, it charges it. Um, and then they also make other variations of this. They make a miniature one. This one here takes AA batteries. <clears throat> and so um, this one does work, uh, but it doesn't have the fancy display on it. Basically you press twice and it's gonna tell me that it's ready to do. It's magic on a half liter of water and then same thing, it has that seal on the outside and these two here are gonna let it know that it's touching water and so it'll start working. And then, I don't know if you see that on camera or not, but uh, you can see that kind of light, lighting up, that light in there. And then you're just gonna take it and you're gonna turn it. Now you can do this also, if you had it like this, you could just take it and put it down in here and turn it like this. Um, or rotate, you know, because you wanna get surface area uh, all the surface area of the water. Now the one thing about these um, UV systems is if it's uh, a lot of sediment in the water, um, it's not, it's not, you have to pre-filter these because the UV has to be able to expose all the microorganisms in there. And if there's, uh, and it, so it's a certain amount of time. So you also have to do it for the full amount of time. I believe for half a liter it's uh, 40 seconds and for a full liter it's 80 seconds. Uh, because DNA can repair itself. So if you don't, so if the DNA gets partially torn but not completely messed up, then the, the organism can go in it and repair its DNA. And so that's why you have to do it for the full time. Um, and you have to have exposure and semi-clear water. You can't have um, really dirty water. You have to pre-filter it. Now, Surrey Pen does sell a couple of attachments and they sell some of these in kits um, that have pre-filters in them. Uh, if the water's a little, like a little tinted, that's not gonna be as big of a deal um, as long as it's not you know, completely, you know, you just, you can't see anything through it, but it, you know, if it's got a little tint in it from, um, you know, being exposed to pine or leaves or, or you know, a tannin, something that's, that's kind of tinted the water, then, then that's fine. You still want to have a lot of dirt and debris, and you want to make sure you do this. Of course, it went off just then, and so it's done, um, and, it's, and it's a flashing green and telling me that it's good to go. Uh, but you want to make sure that it, the, all the water and all the organisms in the water, microorganisms in the water, can get exposed to the light for the proper amount of time so that their DNA does get um, completely destroyed. Now, some of the attachments that you can get for this is, this right here is an attachment that will filter on, and if you'll notice here, it's got a, it's got, um, a section here that protects your threads, and that's important. So for, if you're using chlorine dioxide or iodine, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, after you got it in there, you're gonna then put on your cap, and you're gonna turn it upside down loosely, I'm not gonna do it now, but loosely, and you're gonna let some of that water just kinda of trickle and get on the threads, because um, if your water inside is treated, but there's water on the outside that didn't get treated, um, it, you can still get sick, um, because bacteria basically can, uh, the way it works is that it re replicates itself massively, and, uh, and that's how you get sick. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure um, every, everything is being exposed is being, um, is being treated. Uh, so this protects the threads, but it's not foolproof. You still want to make sure that, you know, you clean them very well. Um, and you just put this on, just like this. And so this is um, basically sealed off these threads <clears throat> to protect them. And in, there, in here, there's this little filter system. And um, it just locks into place in there. And then what you do is you just take this and you, you, you put it in the submerge in the water and you fill this up. Um, it works okay with the hard Nalgenes, the soft Nalgenes I had problems with. Um, and then another system that you can get is this one here. And this one is got, so, so it has a cone down here. So say I have a small bottle like this. Um, and I want to pre-filter my water. You just set it in there like that and then you would dip 
uh, and, and fill it that way. And then it's the same thing, it's got the little pre-filter in here that just sticks right inside there and you twist it. <clears throat> and then if you want to use this on the bigger one, this comes apart and then you just take it and you stick it in there like that. And so that's, that's the pre-filtering system. But you have to pre-filter, um, you want to pre-filter everything really, um, but for UV to, UV to work properly, you really have to pre-filter it. So uh, one of the last things I want to talk about is the uh, stuff that you find in the store. You'll see stuff, so this right here I found in the store. It has no markings on it. It has no manufacturer on it. It doesn't say anything. It just says H2O. Um, water filtration system, drink and thrive. Never trust anything like this. Um, this is probably designed to keep, so it's probably got a charcoal element in there and you're going to have your tap water and then it's just gonna make it taste better. Um, but don't think that this is gonna be something that you can go out and save your life or use in, in an environment where you won't get sick. Um, make sure that you know it has a manufacturer, it has all the stats on it. Um, and the other thing is to do your research. Make sure you go to all these manufacturers. Make sure that you research the area you're going to. You know what the risks are. You know if there's um, any viruses that's going to be in the area. Go to the manufacturer. Um, don't take Amazon's word for it. Don't take REI's word for it on their website. Don't take your buddy's word for it or, you know, someone on YouTube. You know, make sure you do your research of where you're going, um, what the, you're going to be exposed to, and then which system is going to be best for you. And then just always, again, remember that two is one and one is none. Um, when it comes to uh, water purification slash filtration and also like building fires, you know, you want to have two ways to build a fire. So I just wanted to do a quick rundown of this. Um, there's a lot of people that think they're being protecting or they're protecting themselves but aren't actually um, using the right instrument um, in the area that they're going to be in. So uh, if you have any questions, just leave in the comments below. Um, there's a lot of great products out there, but different products have different specs. For example, MSR, most of their products have 0.2. Um, and so that's because it increases their flow rate, whereas, you know, the Sawyers are 0.1. So um, I personally would go with, you know, something that has a 0.1 micron um, versus something that had a 0.2 micron, uh, depending on where I was going to be and uh, what the risks were. Because um, if you get Giardia or Cryptosporidium, you know, even if you're going out for just an overnight trip, you know, if you get uh, really bad diarrhea, it's just going to make, regardless if you make it back to the house or not, it's, you're going to have a bad few days. So definitely protect yourself. Um, you'll see people, especially like AT through hikers, that will go up to springs and drink directly from springs. And, or you'll see people that say, oh, I've lived here all my life. You know, I drink from that and it's, I've never had any problems. And if you're not, if they're from that area, maybe that's true. But if you're not from that area, uh, they maybe are used to that and uh, they, the, their system's able to handle that. Um, and so, but if you do the same thing and you're not from that area, um, it can affect you adversely, whereas it may not affect them adversely. It, it, rule of thumb, never take a chance. Always purify slash filter your water, depending on, on if you need protection from viruses or not. Um, but thanks for watching. Leave your comments, questions below, and uh, have a wonderful day.